I I wish I had something interesting. My, my big news is uh the, the blueberries we transplanted. The blueberry bushes appear to have, to take to have taken. Yay! That's, that's my big well, that's news. That's good. Blueberries are nice. I'm I'm antique. Hey, uh, we got it. the blueberry bush. We move that up to the front yard. Now I've uh, I gotta go through with uh, I've gotta dig up some of the soil and mix don't, it with don't, water. Don't call Dan Pear Dan Bun. And, and then then I've got to uh, put if I put the baking soda in the soil and the water and it fizzes, that means it's acidic. But if I put the vinegar, I'm learning all this stupid gardening. Nice. Is that true? Yes. That that is a very bare basic dumb way to te check the pH of your your uh your garden. If you you mix up water and some of the soil from your water, you put baking soda in it and it fizzes, it's acidic. If you put vinegar in it and it fizzes, it's alkaline. Huh. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, some people in the audience just learned something on accident. The more you know. I feel like I should apologize. That's not what we're here for. We're, we're, we're not, not here to teach people things. Yeah, we're we're here to like th th if if you're learning something from my show, um, chances are you need to learn other things first because th th none of these things should be surprising to you. And yet, for so many, they are. I don't think Dan is starting to look like Geralt of Rivia just because he has white hair. Like people do this thing when you have any kind of notable hair, and they decide you look like everybody with that color <laughs> hair. Because I've been told I look like Deborah Messing, Nicole Kidman, Allison. I don't look like any of those people. None of those people look alike either. No. No, none of those look like. I don't look like any of those people except I have red hair. And Dan, my family says he looks like Michael McDonald. TikTok thinks he looks like Jay Leno. Yeah. I've gotten George Lucas. Like, you got to look beyond the hair, you guys. People that are brunettes have all different faces. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, with that in mind, with boring the shit out of everybody. God, when did I get so la. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's get the intro going for a bit. And here we go. Each week. Catherine, ready to our audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff for a little segment we like to call What the fuck is wrong with you? This week, um, it is, did, did you know, back to the more you know, did you know it is the anniversary uh, for Pokemons? No. Let me see, it, it is, yeah, 25 years of, of the Pokemons. Uh, but post, I can barely name any Pokemans. Post Malone did a, a Pokemon concert. I did hear that, yeah. That that that's like fucking what was someone said that it was like fucking Mad Libs on Twitter. Um Yeah. Well, like what is that? In the spirit of the Pokemon, not to be outdone, we, we have our own Pokemon feature on our show that God help us. Um, come on, damn you. Police searching for two men after they pulled shotgun on McDonald's employee after buying Happy Meals. Police are searching for two men. They say bought Happy Meals from a Woodstock's McDonald's for the Pokemon toys inside, left the food on the restaurant floor, then pulled a shotgun on employees who confronted them. Let's talk. Please say the two men entered the store around 10 p.m. Wednesday. The men bought 10 Happy Meals, took out the toys, and then left the food all over the floor before leaving. Really? Like these are grown-up people, yes, not children. The, allegedly, store employees approached the men in the parking lot, and one of the men pointed a shotgun at them. The men left in a black Honda or Kia sedan. Better You're going to pull a shotgun and drive off in a fucking Kia? 
How dare you? <laughs> You're going to be pulling guns on people. Get a real fucking car. <laughs> you don't see me pulling off heist in my fucking Honda Fit, do you? No, because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> oh. I love this line, and this is actual. This is an actual fucking police quote. Police said the men are in their late teens or early twenties, and both quote both males are Pokemon fans. You don't say. That's the kind of crack detective work that's going to close this case. <laughs> oh man! Just side note. Side note. This is unrelated to this. Um. You know, Lady Gaga's her dogs were were dog napped at at yes. like gunpoint. I and then uh, consequence of sound, which is a, a a music website, does news stories. Wrote a headline that says, "Police recover Lady Gaga's dog." Yeah, they really didn't. Yeah, because the per someone brought them to the police. Right, they sat there and accepted. The return. Right. Yeah. It's it's kind of like crack police work. Yeah. I had a feeling those dogs were gonna come back pretty quick once Danny Trejo announced on Twitter that he was gonna be looking. Cause I was like, man, like that's possibly the only real life thing equivalent to John Wick. Cause Danny Trejo will fuck you up and he loves him some dogs. So like as soon as he was like, I got this, I'll find your dog, I was like, they're gonna turn them in crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, please don't send Danny Trejo after us. Uh, but back to this one. What the fuck? What in the living fuck? Like, grow the fuck up. Literally grow the fuck up. Look, you you can be an adult and enjoy, you know, that sort of shit. Yeah. That's no problem. I have a whole case of Funko Pops over here. I like them. But you you don't have to, to fucking be a fucking fool about it. Who raised you? you? Yeah. Hey, where, where, and waste all that food. Where where you are are you from like a pack of feral dogs? Is that where you where you 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 came from? No, a pack of feral dogs wouldn't waste all that food. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Like, they would eat that fucking food. I, there there must be some other way to get the happy meal toys without having to throw out all the happy meal food. Yeah. If you're paying for the food anyway, give it to people. If you don't want the food, but you're paying for the food, you could just give it to people. You could walk or, up to people in the fucking restaurant. Want a Happy Meal? For, for free? That? I mean, they. what was that? Do you have an elephant in your house? I do not know <laughs> what that was. It was loud, whatever it was. Anyway, no, we do not have an elephant. That was pulling out the gecko background washer. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. All right. It's like, what have you done to Loki? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we, we have gotten far too comfortable with this whole remote thing. I know it's been kind of a necessity because of the pandemic. But we're getting too comfortable with it in some really fucked up ways. And uh, th this, I think, we need to reassess our etiquette for... I'm sick of it. I want to go to a movie. California doctor performs surgery during a <gasps> Zoom court appearance. California doctor's trial was delayed after he appeared for a virtual court hearing while simultaneously conducting a surgery last Thursday. Dr. Scott Green, a plastic surgeon. Oh, so this wasn't like somebody was dying. No, no, th this didn't happen. This wasn't like, I'm saving this man's life. I have right, to replace like his heart. This wasn't like a fucking emergency no, that no. happened. Showed up to his virtual Sacramento Superior Court hearing, held over Zoom, to contest a traffic violation. Are you fucking kidding me? Look at look at look at this dude. He that he literally Oh my god. Um Where in your scrubs are the pockets where you're keeping all that fucking audacity? <laughs> <laughs> 
Tell um, me the judge was like, clearly you didn't have time to show up, so you're, you're yeah. paying your fucking ticket. Are you available for trial? A Sacramento Superior Clerk asked Green. It kind of looks like you're in an operating room right now. I'm in an operating room, he replied. Yes, I'm available for tr trial. Go right ahead. The sound of medical equipment beeping can be heard in the background. Green is seen handling surgical tools in the live stream. He said another surgeon was by, nearby to assist with the surgery while he appeared for court. But after he confirmed he was operating on a patient, Judge Gary Link, the court commissioner, rescheduled the trial. No! No! You wanted to contest your ticket. You brought us here. And then you decide you can't be arsed to take the day off work. Pay your fucking ticket. Done. Wait, wait. We we just gotten way too comfortable with this virtual also, shit. Also, like, imagine being that patient. Yeah, you're like somebody's gonna see this news story and realize that that was during their surgery, and be like, "I'm not paying you, motherfucker." This is like borderline malpractice. He's like, "No, there's another surgeon here. If there was another surgeon there, why didn't you just let them do it?" Right. And maybe, you know, show up for your court appearance. Like, oh, no, I can't imagine being that patient. I it's it's because we're like, oh, it's remote. That means we can do other things at the same time. We've we've, we've blurred the lines of our, our social acceptable of what's acceptable. And it's like, Evelyn, your new breasts, one's up here and one's down here. <laughs> what happened? Well, my plastic surgeon had a traffic ticket. <laughs> Fucking yeah, he's up for sanctions. Of course you were. He should fucking be. Idiot. He should be up for out of a fucking job. Mm. Next one is I. I'm one of those people all the times. Like, why can't you just Google this? Why can't? Why are you asking me how to do a thing when you like can, once a week on Twitter? We have the accumulated <laughs> knowledge of the entire fucking species available within nanoseconds and yet people will be like hey uh, how do you how do i do this what what's yeah. this what are you talking about what's this term i don't understand uh, i don't understand that reference you just made like seriously so i'm the first person to say just fucking google it however not always the best the plan result. My phone. Uh, okay. Google? Why why are you helping? It's my, my phone is like, what? Can I help now? No, go away. Did you say Google? <laughs> I'm Google. My likes weird. Yeah, well, you know what Google also does? Google has a memory. Man char please, search history shows man set car on fire before report reporting it stolen. <laughs> Westmoreland fan is facing charges after he allegedly set his own car on fire and reported it stolen. Police responded to the incident after 54-year-old Donald Cassidy of West Newton reported his 2010 GMC Acadia stolen on February 15th. On investigation, troopers located the vehicle in the woods off Whitebridge Road. The vehicle was reportedly set on fire and unrecognizable. However, a visible VIN number was on the vehicle certified Cassidy as the owner. Cassidy's phone was later obtained by troopers as evidence. A search of the phone's internet history revealed that Cassidy had reportedly searched for, quote, how to set your car on fire and make it look like an accident. I want to I want to clear the cash. I mean, kudos for learning how to use booleans. That's I, I, I appreciate that, but. So you might want to might want to clear your cash, clear your history before calling the cops. Like he didn't. This is if you really were this stumped on how to make this crime work, because I'm sure all the time there's a website for how to make this crime work, and it's foolproof because it's well, yeah, on it's the internet. Show. It's on the internet, but we're doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> We kind of technically are, but couldn't you even just go to the library? 
Yeah. Go to the library one town over. Alternately, just set the car on fire. Like, <laughs> how do you think the car thieves do it? Do you think they have a special method? Wait, wait, wait. I need to check the wiki. Are we doing this right? Just Did set I follow the fucking car on fire? Did like, I follow the instructions? Step one, fire. Step two. Well, I think that's it. I think we're done. Just throw a fucking lit cigarette in it and you're done. I don't understand. Like, how hard can it be to set a car on fire? You know, I've known some people who could fuck up a glass of water. So you say, how hard is it? See, and I've set my oven on fire trying to broil a hamburger. So I feel like it can't be that hard to set things on fire when I wasn't even trying. <laughs> <sighs> it didn't have to look like an accident because he reported the car stolen. So in fact, you wanted it to look on purpose. Yeah, but there's always the, did you steal it? Well. Right, but you don't need it to look like an accidental fire. You do because, uh, it, well, well, you need to look like, you need it to look like a fire that you can't be blamed for. Right. <laughs> Loki has some tips on how to set a car on fire. <laughs> Here's he does. Next up, all right. I saw somebody mentioning uh, this today on, on Twitter, the, the, the hustle mentality that we have cultivated. Yeah. That uh, we, we, we've got to always be Looking for that, working that angle, always got to be be chasing the dollar, and uh, it's it's decidedly unhealthy. Um, but at least you know, there at least the kids are showing initiative. Um, twelve year old girl accused of selling stun guns at Tampa Middle School. Wow. A 12-year-old student is charged this afternoon after she sold stun guns at Coleman Middle School. The Florida Girl Scouts are fucked up. <laughs> what happened to cookies? According to the Tampa Police Department, a staff member at the school alerted the administration the student had brought the stun guns on campus. School reserve officer, uh, school resource officer removed the student from class and she admitted to purchasing five electric stun guns online and bought them to school to sell to other students, later adding, she'd sold three stun guns. Girl was found to be in possession of two black Viper Tech stun guns. Police says there was no threat made to any individual or the school itself. She was taken to the juvenile assessment center, charged with possession of a weapon on school property. Tampa police say three stun guns still have not been located at this time. <laughs> I mean, someone is learning about supply and demand at an early age. Yeah, in a mafia kind of way. <laughs> I wonder how much of a markup she was putting on the fucker. Where was she getting them? Online. That's all it says. Online. Like, what 12-year-old... What 12-year-old's parents is just not suspicious? <laughs> <laughs> like I've never been the parent of a 12 year old but my sisters both have and they're pretty fucking suspicious about everything those kids do you know what's fucked up this is a plot line from the wire almost Is that they, they did one year about the wire was, was about Baltimore school system and one of the kids was selling candy in the school and he figured out if he bought the candy online he'd get a bigger discount so he had to get his teacher because his teacher had the credit card. He had the credit card, but all that. So yeah, this is the this is like the wire, only it's a stun gun. You wouldn't expect reality to be darker than the wire. Seriously, right? But like you'd yeah. expect the stun gun plot to be from the wire and a kid <laughs> to modify it with candy. <laughs> Not the other way around. Not the other way around. Just fucking. God damn. 
Now, you know, the problem is she it's not the cops. It's it's the fucking IRS because she didn't keep proper receipts. They're going to bust Uh-oh. her for that shit. They're, they're, a 12 year old. Yes. Because, like, well, I didn't pay taxes on my babysitting money when I was 13. A 12 year old below a certain income level. If you're like in the mm-hmm. higher brackets, they can't afford to because you know, like I got paid in cash afford. for babysitting and I never had to do taxes. Or maybe I just didn't. (laughs) Who's going to tell you to? For Uh, legal reasons, none of that was true. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of legal reasons, this is one of the stupidest grudges. And the results are, gee, fucking idiot. Um, look, I have had my go-rounds with bureaucracy, with, with, uh, with the state, when my father died, trying to get his estate settled was, oh my god, pain in the ass. And I've had little issues with the IRS now and again. Nothing serious, but just like, oh, you need to send us this form. I did twice. You want another copy? What are you? You, you making? A, are you making a paper mache doll or some shit? When my sister took over my parents' estate, she didn't realize that literally everybody needs an original copy of a death certificate. Nobody will take a copy. So she had to buy like 50 Mm -hmm. copies of both my parents' death certificates. Because you can't just get them. You have to pay for them. Yeah. So, yeah, I I know bureaucracy and and government agencies, they can be a bit of a hassle. True. But I have never in my life decided I was going to send a terrorist threat. And it's even worse. It just. When we get into the story, it gets it's stupider. Las Vegas man sent threats, including suspicious powder, to the Schenectady-based gaming commission over a 40-year grudge. On the envelopes that contained the suspicious but ultimately harmless powder, he also placed his own name and return address. <laughs> Brent Carter... 72 was charged with mailing the envelopes and was arraigned via video remotely from Las Vegas, at least with conditions pending trial. He made the phone threats and sent four separate mailings of suspicious power between April 2019 and this past January. Carter had previously interacted with the New York State Gaming Commission in 1976. Commission had I wasn't even born then. He was. Commission had temporarily suspended him from competing in horse racing for approximately one month so it could investigate allegations of cheating. The commission ultimately cleared Carter the same year and reinstated his license. However, since then, over the course of apparently approximately 40 years, Carter has contacted employees of the Gaming Commission claiming they denied him a career in horse racing. Commission responded by providing Carter with letters in- indicating Carter was not suspended from horse racing. The complaint then specifically outlined numerous phone calls made by Carter between October 2017 and 2018 to commission employees where he let prim- left, primarily left voicemails. In one, he allegedly referred to the Las Vegas mass shooting from 2017, saying... Well, it looks like the shooter in Las Vegas missed you guys. As long as you're not available, maybe you should be made permanently not available. This is a crazy person. You you are angry at them for something that never... What the fuck? What is even the fuck? They suspended your license for one month and it's been 40 years and you're still going. Like, damn. Like, what's it like being your ex? Shit, yeah, right? Fucking hell. Wow. Wow, indeed. Just remember, every goddamn little thing. Time to let it go, Elsa. (laughs) So now, you're so, so hung up on this stupid thing that didn't even happen. That you're now, you're... See, here's the thing about when you send suspicious powder, you're still getting charged with the same thing right. as if you sent the actual dangerous shit. Even if it's just like talc powder? Yep. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. 
you're going, you're getting the bad charges. But you know what's not illegal? Mailing glitter. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't even deserve it, though. If you, if you want to ruin somebody's day in a completely harmless way, just mail them glitter. It's not a crime, and they will never forget you. Because they'll still be finding it 10 years on. <laughs> but, but, but it's, uh, it didn't even do anything. They didn't deserve it. This is just somebody who got fixated and had a lot of unexpressed rage. I really hope when I reach 72, I've got better shit to do with my time. See, I worry about this guy. <laughs> Like, I think I told him the other day, like, I worry when you no longer have to think about maintaining a job <laughs> or worry about taking care of your mom and just have no excuse to have any more fucks and have too much time on your hands. Like, yeah, it's going to happen is Elon Musk is going to get to Mars and Dan's are going to be there like, hi, how you doing? Yeah, but you, you already told me I can't talk to your sister because I know how to get rid, get away with crime. I'm not worried about you getting away with it. I'm worried about what you're going to like. I'm just going to have to invest in trank darts. <laughs> <laughs> when Dan announces his retirement, I'm going to need a trank gun <laughs> like they have at the zoo. Speaking of a retirement, this is I, I kind of. Yeah, the, the, you're you're fucking retired. All right. Um. You're actually, you're never working in your field again, like it or not. <laughs> Retired involuntarily? EMS employee detained <laughs> after throwing Molotov cocktails at several am Connecticut ambulances. Wow. Torrington man was arrested Torrington, after... Torrington? Nothing fucking happens in Torrington? Well, did now. Torrington man was arrested after targeting ambulances around the state Saturday night, throwing Molotov cocktails at them. 37-year-old Richard Wright, Richard White is expected to be extradited to Connecticut sometime in the next couple of weeks. He'll face charges in each town those these fires sparked in. Mm. Oh, pardon me. That was nasty. I'm sorry. I'm terrible. Anyway, I did not set an uh, ambulance on fire, though, so I'm better than that. White allegedly arrived at Hunter's Ambulance Base in Old Saybrook, ignited a makeshift Molotov cocktail inside of the employee room, then fled in a 2004 Gray Ford Taurus. According to police, officers were called to the Hunter's Ambulance uh, with investigation of intentionally set fire. Officers spoke with employees who stayed at approximately 10 a.m. A Hunter's employee by the name of Richard White was involved in a physical altercation with another employee. A disciplinary hearing followed that resulted in White being placed on administrative leave. So, all right, here's what happened. He got in a scuffle with someone else he worked with. He got placed on leave pending an investigation. So, in order to resolve this situation, he went around town throwing mullets of cocktails at ambulances. That's not gonna help your situation like <sighs> they're not gonna be like you know you've really brought me around on your way of thinking it was the third molotov cocktail that did it like the first and second i was like no he needs that administrative leave but the third one i was like you know what we should really think about his point of view no injuries, no one got hurt. Fire response is still there, so they made other provisions for the ambulance. There are other ambulances to service. Yeah, but still, you you took ambulances out of service. Yeah. People like could you're have, fucking lucky. People could have fucking died. Yeah. And and how are the, you were never getting your you were oh my god. Just have a fucking Snickers. <laughs> God damn. You were, you this were, is not the solution to your problem. Anytime you see a problem, and this is for you too, and your solution is Molotov cocktail, you should sit down and keep thinking. You should just sit down, have a <laughs> Snickers, have some tea, and keep thinking. Because that's not the solution. 
That would never be my solution. He's right. He probably built the flamethrower. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also not the solution. Well, depends on the situation. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the problem is zombies. <laughs> Even no, the flamethrowers is Terra. So you're Come telling on. me there's a chance. Terra. I'm I'm a, I'm surprised at you. You don't use flamethrowers on zombies because then you just have flaming zombies. Oh, I guess that's true. You have there's to penetrate the brain. Yeah. You can't just light them on fire. Come this on. is why I wouldn't survive a zombie movie. <laughs> This is why my zombie apocalypse survival plan is this guy. <laughs> mother, just this motherfucker. I don't. How did he? This will make things better. How did that happen in his head? What? What? What was the goal? I'll Beyond show them. I'll fucking show them. Yeah. You'll show them what? That you're going that to they jail. Were absolutely right. Right. Just like. Think I'm gonna I'm starting shit. And you do in fact have anger problems and do not belong in this line of work. Because you did show them that. That is true. I do not expect the medical sir, the medical professionals to be the ones trying to light the fucking ambulances on fire. Now to be fair, like I was raised by a fireman and I've known some EMTs, and they're fucked up people. <laughs> Because the worst case scenario is their job. That's their true. whole job is the worst case scenario. But so they're it? fucked up people because they just do sit around and think about that shit. What is it? Is it like that Nicolas Cage flick? I forget what which one it was. A little bit. Yeah. Like they've seen some shit and their job is how bad can it possibly get? Well, um, so yeah, I guess the first thing we've learned tonight is I'll show them is usually vindication for the other party. Yeah. That's that's not a great job retention strategy. No, uh, not, not normally. Yeah, ve you, you don't you can't exactly put vengeance on a resume. No, I um, mean, even Inigo, Mon even Inigo Montoya knew that he had to look into a new line of work eventually. Um. We we've learned tonight that if 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 you actually send the powder, it doesn't matter what it is, you're still getting charged as if you sent the bad shit. How do you not know this? You you are so many jail. Also, like One, some two, grudges three, are just not jails. Working. Right? Really? Like the fuck? Learn, learn macrame. Jesus Christ, get something to do with your time. Do literally anything else with your life. Um, we've learned that that we're pushing. Uh, are, are we pushing our kids to get started in business early? Apparently, the answer is yes. I mean, if you ask certain people, it's like, oh, you, you got to admire. She's she's got entrepreneur. You know, just, just... I mean, and that is true. You know what? The, we're only we're one little thing away from the story being the perfect dystopian hellscape, and that is if she was selling the stun guns to pay for someone's health operation to pay for her mommy's insulin. Right? It's fucking sh yeah. Um, we, and they fucking make it out to be heartwarming bullshit. You you what? Yeah. Um, we've learned that normally criminals do not have to Google the crime yeah they just do the yeah. crime it's also fire is one of the easiest things to achieve yeah it's it's kind of it's, that's that's a, it's a very low bar what once you yeah it's uh, we've learned that uh sometimes you just have to focus on one thing at a time don't don't get so relaxed in this remote shit that you're like I can multitap. No. You, you... See, I feel like that was like a douchebag power move. Yeah. Yeah. Like this ticket is such bullshit. I'm not even taking the day off work for it. And now he's under disciplinary action, so that's not gonna. Yeah. 
And finally, we've learned um, if you don't want to eat the fuck, if you just want the fucking toy, you're not going to eat the fucking Happy Meal. Hand the fucking food to somebody. Yeah. Or just buy the fucking toy on eBay. Because it's going to be on eBay. Yeah. Pokemon. Got to catch them all. Fucking shot. Who brings a shotgun to McDonald's? People that want chicken McNuggets, apparently, because we've done that story more than once. Honey, I'm going down to McDonald's. Don't forget the shotgun. Okay. Who has a shotgun and a fucking Kia?